Hi everyone, I'm uh, John Simpson, CTO of Qualtrics. Hi, and I'm Abdul Razak. I'm the Chief uh, Product Officer for the Cloud Business Group. And today we're going to talk to you about experience management and X plus O data. Uh, we talked about this at the keynote, but we have this, there's this, fundamentally there's this notion of an experience gap that Qualtrics has been exposed to and has been working through for 17 years. And really what we found was that companies are awash in operational data, or what we call O data. Um, but they were lacking X data, or the Y data, that explains why the operational data was behaving the way it was. Um, as a result, many executives and CEOs believe they're delivering a great experience, but in reality, they're not. Um, o data, as I explained in the keynote, is all the existing operational data that great businesses run on today, right? And the world is awash in O data. Companies have vast, vast, vast troves of operational data. X data, on the other hand, you'd be surprised how many companies actually operate without any X data whatsoever. And so, you know, I spent 10 years at Amazon. One of the interesting things for me at Amazon was I was, I was awash in operational data. I, I would say, oh, well, we did this experiment, you know, orders went up, or, you know, clicks um, on this navigation, navigation element went down. And I was often faced with this conundrum where I didn't understand why it was happening. And I had really two approaches that I could take to understand why. I could devise a hypothesis and run a set of experiments to sort of understand what moves the needle for operational data metrics, or I could sit down with my customers and ask them why they were behaving the way they were, right? And fundamentally, what that X data is for us is there's a, a structured, methodologically rigorous way to ask human beings why questions, in essence, right? There's entire social sciences uh, PhDs and, and experts who spend their entire life thinking about like how do you ask human beings why questions? And what Qualtrics is really great at is collection of that X data at scale and marrying it with the operational data that I talked about to allow you to, drive, to derive those insights without having to do experimentation or without having to do a bunch of BI analysis on the operational data. You can just ask your customers or ask your employees why they're unhappy and then combine the two data sets to arrive at, uh, at insights that let you improve experiences. Um, so, so that's really what we think about, how we think about X plus O data and, and, and the power of them together. Yeah, and, and I wanted to take a, a few minutes to, to um, explain you know, where, why, why, why did it make sense for SAP and Qualtrics to come together? Um, I mean, there is a statistic out there that 77% of the world's transactional data somehow touch an SAP system, right? And when, when what we mean by that is what you see on the right-hand side is all the operational data, which is what's happening in a customer, what's happening with, with, uh, with the employee appraisals, or what's happening in a supply chain, or, or, or finance, or procurement. And that, that product portfolio is SAP's product portfolio. And if, if the right-hand side told you the what is happening in an industry, or, or in, in, in your customer base, or your install base, or your industry, what John mentioned about why is something happening, that was the piece that was missing for us. Uh, we always would reimagine uh, an experience of an employee based on historical data, that, oh, he got uh, exceeded expectations last year, so he must be uh, better or met this year, right? So it was more imaginative only in the context of that transactional data. Uh, but now with Qualtrics, you can, you can answer those why questions, right? Who is your best employee is told by the systems on the right, but whether that employee is about to leave, uh, it, the, that part, you can get that from, from, the, from this X data or experience data as we call it, right? So this is how these two, these two worlds come together. And the second aspect of it is the, the right-hand side is you know, people who need an ERP system already have one, and then they're typically looking at it, at running it more efficiently. And by bringing the experience part into it, you can find the hot spots or the moments that matter where you need to give that unique or, or uh, enhanced experience to an enterprise, and, and this is why uh, we are so excited about this, this combination of SAP and Qualtrics of this, these two data sets coming together which gives us more insights, uh, the ability to, uh, uh, to, to look at it more collectively and correlate against these. 
Um, so I, I covered this in, in brief detail at the keynote, but I thought I'd go a little bit uh, deeper into the, this idea of an XM program, right? And fundamentally, it's worthwhile taking a step back and thinking about the evolution of Qualtrics, and we've had a couple of distinct phases in our company's life cycle. When we first started off, we were a market research company aimed solely at the academic market segment, right? And we graduated tens of thousands of students from MBA programs who were well steeped in using Qualtrics for research methodology. Those students ended up you know, going into industry, and what was interesting was that when they used Qualtrics in industry, they used it for a much narrower set of use cases than they'd used it for in academia. Right? In industry, these people who had graduated using Qualtrics were using it for four things. They were using it to understand customer satisfaction, they were using it to understand employee engagement, they were using it to validate and test product ideas, and they were using it to understand and monitor their brand. As it turns out, doing those four things, though, requires much more than just a survey tool or a market research tool, right? You need sophisticated dashboarding and analysis, right? You need the ability to manage respondents. You need to be able to collect data from multiple channels. And so as we started to build applications in those areas, we sort of pulled it all together into a single platform offering that we call the XM platform. And what dawned on us was that between all the four use cases that I just mentioned, Right? There's actually a, a data-driven business improvement methodology. It's very similar to the MIAC or anything that you would have learned in Six Sigma, right? where you define a metric, you measure, you analyze, you improve, and control. That's really fundamentally what an XM program is, right? where the metric in question is an experience metric, like NPS or intent to leave for employees or product satisfaction. That's the metric. And then you just use a Six Sigma-like demiac process, which we embody in an XM program to improve it. And, and like, like Abdul said, we're incredibly excited about the combination of SAP and Qualtrics. You know, one of the things that we realized with, the, with that combination was the vast amounts of operational data that could be married with the two systems. And, and really, the integration strategy is pretty, it's, it's quite straightforward, right? We're gonna pull in selected X, X, O data from SAP systems to help trigger and run the XM program that I just referred to. And then X data that we then derive using those programs will be pushed back into SAP systems for you know, advanced analytics, right? Um, sort of predictive analytics um, and other use cases that uh, might make sense in the SAP ecosystem. So we really want a unidirectional flow of data between the two systems that will be all done via open APIs um, in the here, here in the near future. Yeah, and, and you can see, I mean, Jurgen talked about it in the keynote, right? So what you see in the bottom there is the, is the business technology platform, which is that, which is that continuous feedback loop um, of d data flowing from the X, um, X to the O and O to the X, depending on the, on the gravity of where you want to uh, derive the insight and then act on the insights, right? So we, we leverage a, a lot of the technologies uh, we already have a lot of these use cases uh, that, that we, have, we have worked around in the CX area. You see some of those examples there uh, in CX, EX, and product experience. Um, and and, and that's, that's fundamentally the, the, the view that we have, to, to create this continuous loop of operational systems uh, driving to a better experience system, and then a better experience system will will churn more and, and, and make your operational systems even more better, right? So there is a continuous feedback loop uh, around that. And, and we call this simply listen, understand, and act, right? Uh, one without the other is, is not that much of, of a meaning. Uh, you can derive insights, but if you can't act on, act on, on it, it's half-baked. And um, so a few examples on this, and, and that's the other part that's fascinating about the journey, uh, that Qualtrics was focused around the four core experiences in, in a company. The, like like uh, John said, the, the metrics, right? NPS is around customer, intent to leave is around an employee, uh, product, and the brand. Uh, these were the four core experiences that, that Qualtrics had embarked on, and we, on our side, um, uh, we had embarked on an on a, on a intelligent enterprise strategy, which is going away from a product uh, silo to an outcome-based thing, right? Which is an outcome for a customer, an outcome for an employee, or an outcome for finance, spend, things of that nature. So it fit perfectly, and now it was just a matter of tying the two things together. So the customer experience on the right-hand side uh, to, the, to the one on the left, uh, for example, in commerce, 
around people to the experience, for, for example, success factors and, and Qualtrics EX, right, and, and on the product side and, and so on and so forth. It was relatively straightforward for us to, uh, to come up with, uh, uh, with um, compelling use cases around it. And, and that's, that's basically how all this, this thing comes together. Um, and, and like John said, um, the ability to correlate between each of these experiences, and that, that's what drives the power of this. I'll give you an example. Um, I don't know how many of you remember what happened to United Airlines on April 2017. Does anybody remember? Yeah, the, the, there was this passenger who was dragged out of that airplane. He was beaten up and dragged out. And why did that happen, right? Um, it was because there was a product that United had put out which was purely based on utilization of seeds. So they oversold. Uh, so there was a bad product which caused an employee experience of United. There were long lines, cancel flights, so they let passengers in even though they didn't have a seat, which led to a customer of United being dragged out of that plane. And on that day, the United stock fell by a billion dollars. I mean, equivalent of a billion dollar in market cap. And even today, we remember that incident. The, the brand loss at that um, is, uh, is humongous. Right? And so this is what the experience gap, when John started out, that's the experience gap that we are trying to fill with the combination of Qualtrics and SAP. Um, so with that, I'll give it to you, John, for to go a little bit deeper into the, uh, yeah. into the platform. And just, and just to add on to um, the potential and the promise of SAP plus Qualtrics that Abdul started to talk about, we've had the opportunity over the last nine months to get to know our SAP colleagues and to start talking to and working with many of the other lines of business within SAP. And I think it goes without saying that you can't get into you know, more than 30 minutes of a meeting before you realize like the use cases and the potential for how these two systems are going to be able to work together is, is, in, enorm is enormous, right? You think about one example with people saw, um, um, uh, success factors that you mentioned, right? Where we've always wanted to do employee lifecycle. Um, we've always wanted to be able to say, well, these are the key events for employees that matter. And um, we've never had that operational data. Well, success factors does, right? And so building triggers out of the success factor system into Qualtrics so that we can you know, solicit feedback about those key life cycle moments um, is just one scratch the surface example of the integration possibilities between the two companies. So, um, so yeah, so how does, it, how does it work from an integration perspective? Well, the good news is that as we've been engaged with these um, other lines of businesses, one of, the, one of the very cool things is that our existing Qualtrics developer platform, which we already built, you know, two years ago, and we're in the process of adding a bunch of new capabilities to it, is the primary vehicle which with which with we're doing these integrations, right? You know, Qualtrics has been a pre-IPO small scrappy startup, and we always knew that if we wanted to bring XM to the world, it, we weren't going to be able to do it on our own. We needed an ecosystem, an ecosystem of partners, and an ecosystem of developers. And so that was really why we built the Qualtrics developer platform, was because we understood that in order for us to realize our full potential and to deliver on the, the vision of XM, we're gonna need to, we're gonna need to bring um, a lot of other folks along. And, and so QDP really is um, a, a developer offering, um, a developer and partner offering that, um, that enables a robust ecosystem to, th to thrive. Um, there's three primary feature sets with QDP that we've built, um, and they're called XM Build, XM Create, and XM Extend. I didn't get a chance in the, um, in the keynote to go too deep into these, so I'll, I'll spend a little bit more time talking about these in turn. So XM Build is really about how do you take the Qualtrics XM platform and customize it and configure it right, for uh, a, a deployment or for a customer's use cases. So for example, say I'm a hypothetical retailer um, that does, uh, you know, specializes in, in bulky item um, purchases like treadmills, right? Um, well, uh, in order to gather the right experience about the fulfillment process, the delivery process, right, I need to know that when this customer ordered this treadmill and it was delivered on this date, that I should send a survey the day after, right? 
that is a, um, an OData uh, integration process that can be configured out of the box using our system, right? So that um, you can set up rules and targeting logic that will then solicit X data collection for that customer in the moment that matters. That kind of configuration, that file-based configuration, configuring the, the surveys that you use for X data collection, configuring when the surveys go out, configuring how the dashboards operate, configuring how you take action on the results. Those are all capabilities that are exposed as part of XM Build that really allows power users and systems integrators to, um, to, 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 to really customize and tailor the platform for the needs of their customers. Um, XM Create is, um, is an entirely different feature set. Um, and what's really cool about XM Create is I talked at length about you know, this really powerful platform that we've built, a unified single SaaS platform that has all the capabilities to allow four different applications that are based off of this notion of an XM program to work. Well, the good news is that the vast majority of the functionality for that platform is exposed already through RESTful APIs and XM Create. And so what we see um, you know, IT developers and partner developers doing is, you know what, there's some use cases that our, our product doesn't handle out of the box natively, but through using these XM Create APIs and using these RESTful APIs, we've enabled a whole range of innovative solutions to be deployed to market that we couldn't even imagine. We, um, we had uh, some, some colleges approach us about building real-time you know, real X data collection in classrooms, integrated with classroom academic systems, right? So students don't have to provision themselves and professors don't have to provision themselves. When you register, you're put into this academic system of record, you show up to the class, you get a text message. Hey, how was, how was this session, right? It just works magically. Now that integration, right, that integration needed to be built. And that integration doesn't come out of the box, but our development teams um, were able to work with, um, with, with partners to, to build that solution using our XM Create APIs. Um, and the great news is that the surface area for this a API is it grows all the time. Like as we add capabilities to the platform, we strive, not always successfully, but we strive to make sure that those APIs become part of the surface area that we expose via XM Create. And so really you have the entire power of the XM platform programmatically available through these RSL APIs. And you can just visit uh, api.qualtrics.com to, to learn more on that one. Um, and then finally, and this is new and we're super excited about it, and the, the couple of the folks who are working on this are sitting over there and probably coding it as we speak. Um, uh, we're really excited about uh, XM Extend. Um, and what we realize is that we've been talking to partners and developers and customers like, you know what, I really love the XM platform, but there's a certain way I want to visualize my data. Like I want a starburst chart with like, you know, four dimensions and when you hover over it, like it needs to rotate and spin and you're like, you know, that's amazing. Like I love that your company wants that, but that's not really something that's gonna resonate with the rest of our market. Um, but we'd like to be give you the ability to create that widget on your own and embed it in the XM platform so that your users can just select it natively, right? So XM Extend is really a set of SDKs and frameworks that allows our developers and partners to extend the power of the XM platform. And we'll start with widgets, right? But we're gonna add reports, right? We're gonna add custom automations. Um, we're gonna add um, custom dashboards. And there's gonna be a big content play here as well, right? If you're a multinational you know, food and beverage manufacturer, you're, you're, you've got a methodology that you use, right, for, um, for, for research. And if you could encode and, 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 and abstract that methodology into the platform so that your users can use it, then um, it's a win-win. Um, and so XM Extend is gonna be a set of features that we're gonna be exposing and building on in the next um, 12 to 18 months that will enable that. We're really, really excited about it. And early, early feedback's been really super positive, so. Um, you know, you can always learn more by going to uh, www.qualtrics.com and, you know, thank you for your time.